And uh, with climate change, are we seeing any differences with bird movements, uh, birds staying here at certain times of the year? So how, how has climate change seemed to be affecting uh, certain species? So it depends on the kind of bird that we're talking okay. about. They, there are responses happening. And so if you're a bird like a song sparrow or an eastern phoebe, you might migrate maybe a few hundred miles south. And the weather that you experience in the winter is probably related to what's happening on the breeding ground. So whatever's happening in the Cleveland winter is not too far off of what's happening in Kentucky or Tennessee. Okay. And so if we get an early spring here, that's going to also be something they can detect on their wintering grounds. So they migrate earlier in the spring and they can respond to changing climate conditions. Wow. If you're a long distance migrant that's going to Central or South America, like a Blackburnian warbler, whatever you're experiencing in, in uh, December and January has nothing to do with what's happening in Cleveland. And so they can't change their behavior based on the weather they experience that winter. They have to have a genetic change that changes what day they migrate north again. And that's asking a lot. That's asking a, a lot of uh, genetic change in a lot of species and, you know, Climate change is getting faster, so yeah, we're right. expecting so a the, lot of. Yeah, right. So, and the genetic change is not quite as fast. No. You got to go through generations. For sure. Yeah. yeah. So, wow, wow. Yeah. And so we're we're seeing mismatches. We see some of these birds are coming back a little earlier in the spring, but not early enough, and that means that the insects have already exploded in the spring and early summer, and they sort of reach a peak, and the babies need to be hatching right at that time so there's lots of food out there but if the birds haven't returned early enough the food has already reached its peak and started dropping off and wow. so they raise fewer young wow. and that's been shown definitively in several uh, fly catchers in, the, in Europe. That is really interesting wow uh, it's it's amazing how everything just so tied together sure, sure. You know, the plants the insects the birds the weather climate it's just it's just crazy. Yeah, I, yeah, and yeah. That's what I love about biology. It's just so tied together that, you know, once you start pulling something, once you start changing something, everything just seems to go kaflooey. Um, <laughs> what, what words would you have for, let's say, somebody that's maybe not so much into birds mm -hmm. that, you know, how can we protect them? What, what would be the best thing for, for us, you know, just a person in the neighborhood? How do you deal with people in the neighborhood? In the neighborhood, well, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's it's still the uh, uh, think global, act local. Is I think it's still a, a great mantra. There, there's climate change is a global problem, and we can't all go and have global solutions. We're going to have to do things in our neighborhoods, and some of that can be really simple things, depending on the maybe the bird you care about. If you're like me, you think woodpeckers are just the coolest right. thing around. Uh -huh. So I have a half-dead oak in my yard, and I'm leaving it alone because that's food for woodpeckers. Okay. That's a really basic level thing, right? But there are bigger picture things like uh, recycling, uh, uh, buying recycled products as much as you can, uh, thinking about your own diet. You want to minimize your impact on the earth as much as you can, and you really, I hate to say it, you have to research every every decision yeah. you're making at this wow. point. Yeah. Uh, what you're buying, how you're using it, what you're throwing sure. away, right. everything's got an impact. Yeah, it really does. That's that's phenomenal. Um, so, yeah, you know, climate change is a sort of the overarching problem that dominates what we think about nowadays. So I'm, I, I am interested in taxonomy and systematics because I want to know how many species of birds there are in the world and where they occur. Mm -hmm. And if we want to preserve them, we have to know the basics, how many there are and where they are. And climate change is making all this more complicated because things are kind uh. of shifting around. Um, but that's not the only issue. We have to think about habitat loss and, and uh, lots of other local management issues. So uh, I, I don't know, I guess my, my answer is there, there's a lot of interrelated, yeah. complicated yeah. problems. Uh, a lot of this relies on people keeping up with the news yeah. and uh, paying attention to local, you know, what impacts are, are happening in your home city and in your own county, and can you, uh, is your voice something that could really help uh, change the way things are being managed? How are you getting your research out to, again, the public? So when I complete a study, it has to go through peer review. Um, so if I make a discovery or, you know, describe a new pattern or process, 
um, that goes to a journal to get reviewed by scientists. And assuming they don't all thumb their nose at it, then it might get revised and eventually published. Once that's happened, it's out for the sort of academics of the world to see, which is not the full audience mm -hmm. we're after, right? right. And so uh, we have a great relationship with our marketing and communications folks at the museum. Uh, we publish our member magazine, which okay. highlights really all the research happening at the museum. And then depending on the nature of the work, we may also start doing press releases and, and putting things out for uh, local papers or, or uh, a lot of internet science yeah, okay. uh, websites okay. as well. So, yeah. And I know you do programs for organizations. Yeah. I don't know I, if that's I, super lucrative, but at least it gets it out to, to the, the public. Yeah. I, I really, uh, I mean, I'm a birder as well as an ornithologist, so I know a lot of the birding groups in the region. I've spoken to a lot of the Audubon societies in, uh, well, northern and central Ohio at okay. this point, and, and I've worked a lot with Ohio Ornithological oh, sure. Society and a lot of other groups. And, uh, yeah, I give a lot of public lectures, and I think it's important, plus yeah. I enjoy doing it. Yeah, that's great. Fantastic. Wow. Well, I don't know. The, the birds... We tweet, we, we, we use bird terms all the time, and so birds are very, very much part of our, our environment. They're, they're the canaries in the cold mine as we're f figuring things out, and uh, we've already learned a lot about how our environment has, is changing, how we might be able to protect it, and we still need to do more, so I'm um, hoping that we can all do that just a little bit right around your neighborhood. Thanks.